Remember, Congressman Austin Scott joins us now. From uh, Georgia. Also from Georgia as well. Congressman, great to have you with us. Hey, great to have you. And Doug Collins has been a great friend of mine for, for decades and just a wonderful, honest guy. I wish you were still here in the fight with us. Uh, but just a, a great guy, and he's telling you the truth, everything I've heard. I mean, governing stuff. We've got a four-seat margin, and, uh, and you know, I, well, the Dems have the Senate and the White House. I'm sure you wish he was there. I, we were, I was texting with him yesterday, and he's kind of happy he's not there right yeah, now. exactly. Not in the middle, of, sure all, all, <laughs> not in the middle <laughs> of all of this. On the other side, kind of giving his analysis. Congressman, real quickly, you know, we're waiting for the final vote tally here. It doesn't appear that much has changed, even though there was some reporting uh, from Newsmax, and we just talked to uh, David McIntosh from the Club for Growth that there was apparently some sort of deal struck last night. But give us your assessment from the ground there and what you're seeing. Has anything changed? Yeah, I, I think it has, and, and things are moving in the right direction. And, and certainly, uh, you know, one of the questions had, had been, and, and you had alluded to this with Club for Growth, is, you know, why are we spending money in Republican primaries and seats that are that are already going to go to a Republican? And so I think that's kind of probably a win-win thing in that, you know, our money is better spent in uh, the competitive seats, not in a seat that, that is that is a solid Republican district. So uh, that, that was one of the things that, that there had been some concerns about. And as a conservative, I'll tell you, the one thing that I want to see is, is the rules that keep the Senate from being able to jam us on, on budget negotiations. The omnibus bill, if you look at the way that was done, it was $1.7 trillion or more comes over here, nobody's read the bill in the House, and then they, they put it on the floor and they vote on it in a matter of hours. And so some type of time delay where uh, anything that comes to the House of Representatives that is, a, that is an appropriation measure or a debt limit measure, you know, that we have to have at least a week to review the legislation before it's passed and adopted uh, and, and sent to the president and signed into law, that, that's one of the things that I think is is it's necessary and actually and get so, them to, so to hold to that right because about how we stop the increases in spending isn't there a rule now about a certain amount of time required to read legislation that they just bypass anyway the, pr the problem is those rules those rules continue to get waived yeah and so uh there is discussion about how we either stop those rules from from being waived or uh, uh give point of orders or some other type of authority to the individual members to stop the increases in spending Makes sense. Now, uh, we want to play a clip. I believe we have uh, the speech from uh, Congressman-elect Dan Bishop of North Carolina, who not too long ago rose. Well, so actually, let's, let's, see what's, let's see what's happening now. They're, they're rising in applause for Kevin McCarthy. Let's listen in real quick. McCall. McCarthy. McCarthy. Okay, so that, that was McCarthy McClain. apparently voting for himself there and getting that's a round of applause. So just kind of keeping, uh, keeping pace on, on what's going on here. So, uh, Congressman, if you want to continue what you were saying before, I started to cut you off there. Yeah, you were going to show the clip of Dan, Dan Bishop, I think, and what he had to say. And uh, certainly I like Dan. He's a solid conservative. I like Byron. Byron's a friend of mine. He's, he's a solid conservative. Uh, but, but remember this. It's, it's not just about the name of the person that's in the chair. There are teams of people that, that are our staff that, that we need to be allowed to get to work. We need our attorneys to be preparing, you know, subpoenas to issue to the Biden administration so that Jim Jordan can carry out the, the oversight function of the Judiciary Committee and, and that uh, Comer can carry out the uh, oversight responsibilities that he has as chair of the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee. We need to be getting to work on the border and other things. So ultimately, Kevin McCarthy, I believe, will be the Speaker of the House. Uh, I do think that as, as you know, some compromises have been made on rules and other things that, that we can end up in a better spot uh, today or tomorrow or, or, or a couple of days from now than, than maybe we would have been if we had had it on the first vote. But it, it's, uh, it, it's more important than any individual. It is, it is the, the timeliness is important, but remember this, uh, Congress can work five or six days a week. And so if we, if we want to stay here and take you know, five days or 15 days to get the speaker in the seat and, uh, and the rules established. Uh, there's seven days in a, in, in a week, and most Americans work five days a week, and Congress can work five or six days a week as well. Yeah. Congressman Scott, uh, you talked about the concessions and, you know, Warren Davidson articulately laid out a, a, a myriad of them that, uh, you know, McCarthy had already um, given up when he was uh, speaking yesterday. And these are from the holdouts here. You're a member of the Armed Services Committee. I can just kind of react to some of the demands that, you know, folks could be asking for to be put on these committees, be at the Rules Committee and, and jump ahead and, you know, uh, above other senior members of Congress. Yeah, that that's not workable. Um, I mean, you can't you can't just say because I was part of the 20 
Uh, I want to take someone else's committee slot that has that has been supportive of the conference position. And I would remind you that a lot of the people that voted for Andy Biggs in conference are following the conference rules and voting for Kevin McCarthy now. So if if the demand is that you remove existing members from committee and put others on, uh, that that won't work. I don't think that's actually what they're asking for. Uh, I do think they're asking for commitments on committees. Uh, and, and I will tell you, I, I think that the best people need to be put in the best best spots. I mean, a, a good friend of mine, Andrew Clyde, has been a holdout on this. I'd love to see Andrew Clyde on the Appropriations Committee in charge of the ATF's budget, to be honest with you. I'd like to have you know, my, my bag of popcorn and watch as that discussion went. <laughs> Speaking of bags of popcorn, you know, the Democrats really been enjoying this. I mean, a lot of people saying this is democracy, it's playing out, but the Democrats have wasted no time to be somewhat glib. Um, Kat Kamek yesterday got a little pushback when she called out some of the members, she said, that had brought in alcohol blankets and popcorn. Um, the Democrats have said they weren't drinking on the floor, but uh, do you think there's been somewhat of a, you know, is this really appropriate, the tweeting with the, the popcorn as, you know, this is a very serious issue and, and, you know, there's decisions that will be made, there's votes that are being cast as we speak here in day three, you know, in the focus of America, uh, you know, Democrats sort of reveling in their moment here. It, it is a serious issue. And, it, and if you look at what's happening around the country uh, in Democrat controlled cities and elsewhere, I mean, Democrats thrive on chaos. That is what gets them elected. And uh, I, I think the problem we've got right now is we've got 20 members that, uh, you know, aren't following the rules of our conference. And, and if you're not following the rules, whether it be conference rules or house rules or anything else, then chaos is what you get. Yeah. And so Democrats like chaos. It creates confusion and, and they only get elected when people are confused about the facts. And, uh, you know, a lot of short memories up there in Washington, too, because what uh, goes around tends to come around in Washington, D.C. Right. Congress right. Congressman Austin Scott, great to, great to see you. We'll let you get back out there and vote. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. And speaking of the vote, the